Let me just open with a saying from the aroma of Ethiopia. It goes like this. You can't wake a person who's pretending to sleep. In the next 40 years, we have to produce as much food as we have in the last 8,000. And if we don't get where and how we produce that food right, we won't have a planet that's recognizable. We'll be farming and ranching the whole thing. Groups like WWF don't buy or sell anything. We don't create laws. We don't create national parks. We don't zone areas for use or no use. We've got to figure out how to change the way companies think, governments think, and citizens think if we're going to achieve our work, if we're going to achieve our missions. 50,000 projects isn't going to do it anymore. We don't need Band-Aids. We need tourniquets. Just so that we're all on the same page, we're all on the same planet. This is it. This is home to everybody, regardless of your country, regardless of your age, regardless of the language you speak. And we can't get away from the basic math that population times consumption today is simply not equal to the planet. We're living at about 1.5 planets. We're living on the principle, not the interest. We're living beyond the carrying capacity. And we've got to figure out how to get back in touch. And that's today, one and a half planets. We're going to have two to three billion more people by 2050. The average income is going to be about 2.9 times what it is today. Consumption is going to double. Consumption of animal protein is going to increase even more. 70% of all people will be living in cities. That's as many people as are alive today. And most people in cities don't produce their own food. So where's it going to come from? Whatever the impacts per capita that are acceptable with 7 billion people, and I'd say we're not doing too great at that today, are not going to be acceptable with 9 billion people. These are the countries that are growing at 7% GDP per year over the last few years. Not North America, not Europe. Increased population, increased income, increased consumption. It's a band through largely the tropics. These are WDF's priority places. These are the places where we have most biodiversity, most ecosystem services, where if we're really going to focus in just a few places, these would be the ones to look at. The overlap between GDP growth and biodiversity is pretty strong. We need to use less to figure out how to produce more with less. That's going to be the challenge of the 21st century. The question is, how can we use social media to communicate more effectively, but not just for impressions, for results? The issue isn't what to think. I can tell you an answer, a solution to a problem, but the issue is how to think, because the world is constantly changing and our solutions will have to be different. And as there are more people with more income consuming more, what worked yesterday won't work tomorrow. It'll barely work today. So I've been thinking a lot about how do we talk about our work? How do we educate people? How do we begin to get people to think differently? And I came across this little video.
So what struck me about that is that I'm an anthropologist by training. I've worked on development my whole career in one form or another. And that took really good science. It could, took really good data and communicated it very effectively without cutting corners, without sleight of hand. It was very effective. So I present a lot of data to a lot of different groups. And I've been t talking to, in my, my talks, about a grande latte. And there are lots of ways to look at it. We could look at how much water it takes to make it, how much coffee, sugar, milk, paper, plastic, energy, et cetera. And I decided to focus on water. And I would present my talks to a lot of different audiences. And I got the graphics better. And it began to show just how much water it takes to put um, a grande latte on, on the table in front of you in the morning. And it's about 208 liters for each grande latte. So what were the results I was getting by giving that talk in that way versus how could we present that information in a different way to reach a wider audience? I would speak to 50 or 500 or 1,000 people. How could we up the ante on this? So we created a little video, and we based it on the girl effect video. So within three or four days, we reached a million people with that latte. It was picked up by somebody from Germany who was 35 years old. He thought it was a cool video, and he sent it around to his, his network, and it went on. Every time I gave my talk, every time I showed that video, a big company on the West Coast that sells a lot of coffee uh, would get calls and emails and saying, what are you doing about water? And so that company has actually reduced their internal use, their scope one and two kind of use of water by 50%. And we're in discussions with them now about how they can use signage and how they can raise the issue of water to the two million customers they have every day in 13,000 locations. So getting the company to start shaping the debate, shaping the awareness around water is the result. Focusing on another kind of icon that all of us are aware of, and this was the result.
that we're now in discussion with 700 companies that make IT hardware and software about specifying recycled aluminum in all the goods they make. This is 70 to 90 percent of all the IT equipment on the planet. WF has spent $10 billion on conservation since we were founded 50 years ago. Most of the Fortune 500 companies spend that much on advertising every year. The question is how we get them to talk about our issues. We started with this activity last fall with Coke uh, and used a lot of different uh, social media to raise awareness about polar bears in the Arctic and to raise money to create the last refuge for polar bears. We used YouTube, websites and blogs, Facebook, Twitter, mobile apps. Got a lot of impressions. Coke saw a more than 2% market shift in market share versus other soft drinks. And the result was we raised six of the 10 million we needed to create a refuge in Canada where the last ice was gonna be on the planet. Thank you very much, and I hope we have a good discussion afterwards. Thank you.